Well, now to some news from ISU. The university recently reported it has $12 million. It's got a cut from the budget. Yeah, the plan is to eliminate three dean positions and seven associate deans. Some of those administrative positions come from current employees who have chosen to retire. Additionally, there are program suspensions and some staff positions have been eliminated. The number is in the single digits. Program suspensions and faculty eliminations come from enrollment numbers as well as recommendations from faculty. These measures will result in $2.3 million in cuts. Now, Jen Thompson was back on campus today for day number two of the trustees meeting. And today's meeting focused primarily on an overview of inclusive excellence at Indiana State and their diverse campus and workforce. Jen joins us now from the newsroom with more from ISU. Dana, during remarks, the ISU faculty chairperson, Dr. James Gustafson, expressed frustration and anxiety from the faculty. He said that frustration was over restructuring and the communication surrounding that. He noted that they have lost several instructors and instructional staff to layoffs. He stated that the faculty needs a clear vision on how this will translate into the future of ISU to better attract and retain students. After board remarks, the meeting went on to new business. Two items brought to the board and approved include changes to course and program specific fees, as well as an increase in housing and dining. And as we talk about affordability as well as we're setting housing and dining rates and, and fees, we are keeping this very affordable. And when we say compare us to our peers in the state, we are the most affordable public campus in Indiana with a statewide mission. For a traditional room and standard dining plan, there will be a 1.25% increase for the 23-24 academic year and a 1% increase for 500 Wabash and University Apartments. Students at those two facilities are not required to purchase a meal plan. Curtis said that increase is not near the cost of inflation. The increase we're asking for in housing and dining doesn't begin to cover the increase in inflation and the cost of food, but we know our students can't afford to pay more. Curtis says it's no accident that ISU is the most affordable public campus in the state. We do that on purpose. We really make sure that students have more affordable than anywhere else the opportunity as well as the access. Diversity and inclusion were both priority topics on the agenda. Per capita, we are the most diverse public campus in the state of Indiana, and yet we are not in a tremendously diverse community. So those are the environments we're in, and we're really pushing to say, can we keep some of those graduates in the Wabash Valley and help them find home and careers here as well? Curtis said they are working with the city and the county to help make the Valley a place that graduates want to stay. Today, they also discussed changing a few policies, including the structure and size of the University Faculty Senate. They approved Juneteenth as a recognized university holiday and proposed new minors and a certificate, both to be further discussed at a later date. While there are many changes on the horizon at Indiana State, they look forward to drawing more students to Indiana State and hope to retain them here in the Valley.